Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience 101. Have you ever met that special person that gives you butterflies in the stomach? Or have you ever been in an uncertain situation and people told you, you know, just follow your gut? Well, obviously, we make decisions with our brain. However, the brain and the gut actually have an important relationship with each other and are able to communicate and cooperate in multiple ways that affect our cognition, behavior, mood and mental health. In this video, we will discuss how the brain and the gut are working together and how their relationship affects our daily lives. At the first glance, our digestive system might be seen as an autonomous part of the body that simply digests food and turns it into nutrients, independent of whatever is going on in our brain. This, however, is not an accurate view of what's going on. Throughout our digestive system, we have a large network of neurons and nerves that allow our brain and gut to communicate with each other. This network of neurons is called the enteric nervous system and is the largest and most complex neural unit aside from the brain and spinal cord. Specifically, the enteric nervous system consists of a web of sensory neurons, motor neurons and interneurons that are embedded in the gut wall stretching from the lower third of the esophagus right through the entire gastrointestinal system. Consisting of roughly 500 to 600 million neurons, the enteric nervous system is able to work independently of the brain and the spinal cord. But it is heavily connected to the central nervous system via the vagus nerve. So, in addition to the independent work of the digestive system, there is also a bidirectional communication and cooperation between the gut and the brain. Now, the brain and the gut are not only communicating via the vagus nerve. For instance, the actions, availability and diversity of our gut microbiota can also have a tremendous effect on our neural processing. While bacteria and microbes in the gut are crucial for nutrient metabolism and modulation of our immune system, they are also able to produce hormones and neurotransmitters identical to those produced in the brain. These can in turn act on bacterial receptors and they are also able to directly stimulate afferent neurons located in the enteric nervous system to transmit signals through the brain. Gut bacteria also have been shown to possibly have an effect on the body's usage of vitamin B6, which in turn has a profound effect on the health of neurons and muscle cells. These effects include, for instance, the modulation of immune tolerance, which means that gut bacteria in turn are associated with immune diseases, such as multiple sclerosis. So now that we know some ways in which the brain and the gut communicate, the next step is to figure out the purpose of this bidirectional communication. Well, one of the perhaps more obvious reasons is for digestion. The gastrointestinal system has to be able to communicate with the brain to inform it when the stomach is empty and when it might be time to eat something. To communicate this, the peptide ghrelin, which is produced and released by the stomach, will stimulate activity in the hypothalamus, which in turn leads to an increase in appetite. Ghrelin also stimulates the digestive system to start moving the food from the stomach through the small and large intestines. Afterwards, during digestion, another peptide called leptin is released. As with ghrelin, leptin release will also stimulate the hypothalamus, which results in a suppression of hunger and will make us feel full. Interestingly, serotonin, a neurotransmitter in the brain typically associated with feeling good, is also found in the gastrointestinal tract. In fact, some estimates suggest that approximately 95% of all serotonin in the human body is found not in the brain, but throughout the digestive system. Now, the role of serotonin here is in part to aid this reduction in our appetite when eating, but it also plays a role in other gastrointestinal processes, such as controlling of bowel function. In addition to the role it plays in digestion and metabolism, the relationship between the brain and gut is also important for many other reasons. Several lines of research have for instance suggested that there is a bidirectional link between the processes in the gastrointestinal tract and cognition. This is for instance the case when it comes to the availability and diversity of gut microbiota. For example, there is a neuropeptide present in the gut called galanin which is believed to be associated with several important neural functions, such as nociception, which is pain perception, the circadian rhythm and mood. 
Galanin also has been shown to stimulate the activity of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA axis for short, leading to the secretion of stress hormones and in turn, an increase in stress reactivity. A dysregulation in this process can lead to dysfunction in our cognitive and emotional functions by potentially leading to conditions such as major depressive disorder, anxiety disorders and even memory problems. In turn, HPA axis dysregulation can also lead to problems in the gut, for instance by negatively affecting our immune system and increasing the risk of metabolic disorders. Beyond negatively affecting stress and memory, dysregulation and dysfunction of certain gastrointestinal processes also has been found to be associated with several disorders, such as alcohol use disorder, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia and restless leg syndrome. Now the research and findings discussed in this video only scratch the surface of what the communication between the gut and the brain entails. And furthermore, there is still a lot of unknowns and a lot of research to be done. But anyway, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider leaving a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.